Hello and welcome to Mac Staff Live. Uh, my name is Martin Croson. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks for joining in. I'm joined by MD of uh, Mac Staff, Anthony McCormack. Anthony, good morning. Yeah, hi Martin. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, great. Thanks. I really look forward to these uh, these days. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is our third one. We've done a couple more, which you can find on YouTube. I'm reminding you about where they they are uh, after today's chat. But today we're going to be discussing uh, social media, the positives and the perils of uh, social media in terms of searching for a job and whether they can actually be useful for your job search or whether if used in the wrong way, they can actually be detrimental and hurt you um, getting the job you're after. So, um, and to phrase you use in the, in your book, job search, job done about this is product you. So I think that's a really good place to start. Um, what do you mean by product you and why should people be careful of that? Okay. Yeah. So, um, I guess job search and, and then subsequently, um, interviews is all about kind of selling yourself isn't it and you you know you are essentially the product so it's a unique situation really in that um you know you're both the product and the salesperson and you've got to kind of walk that line then between um kind of over overselling yourself but you know also you don't want to yeah. be too concerned to um not kind of sing blow your own trumpet or sing your praises or whatever because you know nobody else is going to in this example so um you know people also talk about um, you know, personal brand. Um, and this is about just making sure that the, the marketing, um, which is where the social media comes in, I guess, and the sales, which is where the interview comes in, um, are basically all aligned um, so that you can get the right result of, uh, you know, securing the, the uh, job position in hand. Yeah. Um, and this, as well as that, that wider scope, I mean, one of the things that everybody does as soon as they want to find out information about somebody is Google a name. Um, <laughs> I'm sure this yeah. goes on with searching for for people's um, backgrounds as well. I mean, if I put my name into Google, I get a um, company that um, manufacture produces and warehouse potatoes out to uh, markets, <laughs> which is not the most glamorous. You've got, you've got many talents. You'll, you'll ever find. <laughs> and unfortunately, nothing to do with me. But um, is it a good idea to Google yourself and just see what comes up? Well, um, now that we've mentioned it, I'm sure that we're going to have a few people that are kind of, um, you know, doing it, doing it in a minute. I, it's it's worth doing out of curiosity, isn't it? It might seem a little bit um, kind of vain, I suppose, but I, the, for you know, for the context of this, I think you should um, Google yourself because potentially that's what the uh, you know the employer or the interviewer is going to do. So you know, you might as well um, you know see what they're going to find, might you? It's like for forewarned is forearmed. Um, yeah. You know, getting things if 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 there is negative things to do with yourself, getting them removed. That's a, I guess a, another story. But um, you know, if you're just conscious, um, you know, of what you're putting out there through various social media channels that all end up being kind of searchable by by Google, then you know you'll probably keep yourself uh, kind of safe and clean. Um, if if you Google me i think that you'll mostly find that the like the other anthony mccormack is some like australian actor guy so um oh good good a bit more glamorous than your like potato <laughs> story <laughs> gutted um mm. there's i mean we're specifically here today to talk about the social media side of things as opposed to google but we're going to get yeah. onto the the big three i suppose linkedin uh, Facebook and, and Twitter in a moment, but there are so many um, social media channels flooding the airwaves at the minute. Um, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, Pinterest. There'll be some more coming in the in the years to come, won't there? It, it's, social media is here to stay. Yeah, and um, I think that you've identified the big three that yeah we'll probably come on to and that are most useful, and and the the main or major one being LinkedIn, I guess. But certainly, yeah, there's um, there's uh, Pinterest and um snapchat and all that and not not massively useful in the job search but i guess this is about kind of being able to uh, avoid this avoid the snakes and climb the ladders of of, of social mm -hmm. media in your job search and i guess just make sure that you know whatever's going on um on um snapchat or you know even facebook um is not a thorn in your side basically um so yeah use whatever ones you want um but keep your privacy settings um you know um tight in that you know your f future or uh, you know or even your current employer can't necessarily access things that you don't want them to access um you know in an ideal world if we were just 
thinking job search. I mean, there's other things going on in your life, I'm sure. But um, if it was just for job search purposes, I'd recommend to really limit the social channels that you use at all. Like maybe just use, okay. um, you know, LinkedIn and and um, with with open settings and f- Facebook with um, like tighter um, security settings. And then you know to do less things um, but better, you know, is is kind of more positive than uh, you know having a raft of different social sure. media channels that are not kind of that you're not kind of really paying attention to or updating properly and um, so if they go on looking yeah, for yeah. you and you've just got that egg like because you haven't finished your twitter profile like properly and the last time you posted was like a, about a weird thing like two years ago it's um it can be a red flag rightly or wrongly yeah, yeah. you mentioned linkedin there though and i guess most people in the in the job search uh, uh, scenario see that as as the biggie mm-hmm. so let, let's yeah. discuss that one it's a professional networking site uh, and a real good chance for people to promote product you. Yeah, it's probably the the major one, and um, you know, increasingly more so. The I guess the more senior um, that you are, or the positions that you're looking at are. Um, mm-hmm. It's owned by Microsoft the, these days. You know, it was kind of bought bought out um, a couple of years ago, um, and you know, the major customer or the focus actually is on um, job seekers as well. That's where they get most of their revenue. It's not it's not employers or or even agencies. Um, okay. So yeah, it's your it's your shop window, um, if you like, for what you've got to offer. Um, you know, from um, a vocational point of view um, and it's also a good um, you know source of um, information articles and professional networking as well so it's not just for job search but it's definitely a tool um, to have in your toolkit and what are the benefits of it for people Anthony specifically is um, as a, uh, a route towards getting a job and, uh, the question I've here often asked about LinkedIn is what sort of photo mm-hmm. should I pick up on my profile as well yeah, so as you say, it's um, it's a um, it's a, a networking site. It's um, useful for job search, um, and it should visibly be be right. So I recommend, you know, ideally a professional um, headshot type um, photo. Um, although having said that, cameras are so good these days, aren't you? As long as you can get a good high resolution, um, you know, snapshot, yeah. and you've you've got, um, I guess, an uncluttered, um, you know, or ideally um, plain white background, that's probably the way to go. Um, then there's a banner. Um, so, you know, if you've got like a, a decent um, uh, image that you might want to use that's kind of in line with your personal brands, then you pop that uh, behind and you're good to go basically um we might come on to it but then then the you know the other thing is is that it, the the work history is um like a mini cv um and then you should okay. make sure that the the two things don't contradict each other sure okay let's move on to uh, twitter and discuss that it's a communication site hmm. uh there's minimal uh, space in those boxes to say a huge amount in 280 characters but how can twitter be useful for you yeah, well, uh, probably, you know, in the recruitment world, same as you, yourself in the social media world there, Martin, Twitter's kind of major and benefits from a lot of engagement, even compared um, to the likes of, of LinkedIn and Facebook. So it's a useful um, tool to use. It's not primarily a job searching thing, but again, it's all about visibility, isn't it? And, um, um, you know, expanding your personal brand. So, yeah, I definitely recommend to use Twitter. It has got a slightly different vibe. It's a little more um, kind of social and informal. So, um, you know, you might want to use a a different but still not silly um photo and you know it tends to be traditional to include more things about your interests and your hobbies and things like that but again don't yeah. let, don't let your guard down um you know or shoot yourself in the foot either in the way that you've presented the profile or that you the way that you interact um with other things as well um because you know p- people can look at what history you've had and what comments you've made and and also i can't remember the names but there's some sites that companies would use to um consolidate and kind of summarize somebody's social media activity across you know all, right, all okay. the channels really? just so that you can easily pick out things that you like or don't like or that match or don't match with like company culture wow I don't know to be excited or worried about that. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so <laughs> sounds like you've got, got to go do some deleting there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you touched on that point there about how people treat Twitter differently to LinkedIn, but I guess that is important not to be LinkedIn posty on Twitter because people are looking for an insight into your personality, aren't they, on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, so you can um, you can use it to 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 yeah, showcase your personality and your interests and things like that. And that and that is of interest to employers. They want to know, you know, about the 
person um you know behind the cv so uh, so yeah you know sh share away but just again be conscious that you're not kind of sharing things that you're um not prepared to discuss or defend at your interview yeah yeah sure let's move on to the, the third one of the big three then facebook um probably the most popular social media channel the world over am i right yes, probably the biggest, in terms of usage yeah biggest for sure, yeah. Um, I, but, it's a, but a completely different vibe to LinkedIn and Twitter, um, mm -hmm. mainly for families, mainly for friends, maybe to share um, more lifestyle-y things. Is there any any way that Facebook can be useful when you're conducting a job search, or is it just something that you just got to be more wary of than beneficial? Yeah, it it can be a useful tool actually, and kind of it's you know traditionally not seen in, in that way, um, but. Um, uh, ironically, I guess um, LinkedIn more useful for you know mid to senior level positions. Facebook probably more useful in the mid to junior uh, or entry level positions. Okay. You know either either blue collar or you know student or graduate. Um, and and Facebook are trying to get into that market, aren't they? Because there is there is Facebook job postings, isn't there? And you know just in the way that yeah. it's a networking site, you can you know speak to especially local companies and um, you know see opportunities and ask your kind of connections you, you know your facebook friends if even if, if they know any sure. positions that might suit you and things like that so yeah you could you use it i guess proactively as a um as a job search tool um but you definitely want to um i guess use it defensively in that um again don't be oversharing things that you think might hamper your your job search so I'd, i've got open um, privacy settings on facebook because we use it for this kind of purpose don't we to um you know to market yeah. um ourselves and develop kind of brand um but if you if you want to have it as a purely social vibe that's not necessarily kind of suitable for employers then just lock down your privacy settings so that only kind of you or your um first degree connections can uh, can see what's going on and I think that's something that's quite often overlooked, Anthony, as well, the, the mm. privacy settings. Um, and the reason why everybody, you know, we all have to be careful, I guess. And even in a way that you're not necessarily, um, you know, putting a picture of you on Facebook, running down the street with just your socks on. I've got, you know, a friend of mine <laughs> seems to post a picture of, a, of himself having a pint of beer or a glass of wine whenever he does so with words cheers on. Now, I think about yep. 22 of the like 25 posts on Facebook or of him with some alcohol in his hand, which again, yep. you know, it, it's harmless on, on its own as, it's, as it is, but thrown together with the reports you were just speaking about may not paint the ideal picture. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you know, if we, it, the you know Facebook stalking, isn't it? If we want to know a little bit about somebody, or like you know, just say, "Oh, is that the person that I remember?" or something like that, then you just go on and do mm. some some stalking, don't you? And um, and that's what the employers do as well, and rightly or wrongly, you know. Um, you know it gives a, a, a fuller picture doesn't it of what people what people's priorities are what they kind of enjoy what they kind of think is important and things like that and it might be kind of drinking obviously it might be like so, social activism it might be a kind of gaming hobby or whatever and it's not necessarily that certain things are good or bad but it just might be a fit or not fit with um you know the company culture they might kind of really like people that are um kind of motor racing petrol head or gaming kind of yeah. nuts and things like that that might really work for them yeah. that might be a positive but it might be the converse you know whereas uh, they're looking for you know people that are more into nature or um painting and things like that it just depends on the the vibe so you've got to be yourself obviously um but just um be aware like and be and be prepared to you know discuss um you know anything on an uh, interview and i guess good advice i was given is you know just don't say or do anything that you wouldn't want to be on you know the, in, on the front page of tomorrow's newspaper um and going <laughs> viral going viral is obviously kind of that on steroids isn't it these days yeah absolutely uh, my next question that i scribbled down was our company is genuinely going to go to the to the uh, extent of searching through your social medias but you know you just mentioned a company that puts reports together so it really is a thing yeah um so yeah i i thought that you probably uh, not necessarily come across that before or might be a, a little skeptical and that that's what i thought that companies do that that's what i'd been told but i um started having a look around and then um, one of my um kind of uh partner companies uh, firefish software that provide my um crm system and help me with yeah. you know, some digital marketing and things like that they'd put a recent blog out actually I'll, I'll kind of literally read you um some of it, it says that um around 90 percent of hiring managers and this is david Connolly, um by the way around 90 percent of hiring managers think 
um, candidates' social profiles are important when considering them for a job. Wow. Um, furthermore, which is the slightly more worrying part, like 79% have turned somebody down um, due to inappropriate social media activity. Um, so, you know, the, the goal of their advice was to help me help you, you know, the the, the job seekers out there to, uh, again, um, avoid the pitfalls of, of social media, um, but but also proactively use it as a good tool at the same time. So six quick things, if we've got time, have we, Martin? Yeah, let's go for it. Um, they um, suggest um, make your make your profiles private, especially Facebook. Um, you know, as as I've mentioned, um, have a good professional um, LinkedIn um, picture, um, and they're saying you know avoid taking photos in bars and blah blah blah. Um, same as we touched on. Um, make sure that your LinkedIn um, matches your CV um, because, okay. you know, it might just be a, an oversight or whatever, which I guess like looks sloppy anyway, but can cause, you know, concern of a red flag of wonder what somebody's hiding or, or, yeah. or whatever. Um, uh, and then to use the LinkedIn and potentially Facebook um, pro properly or proactively gather recommendations. So get testimonials on your work, like put, um, put up um, like uh, examples of your work and again that kind of showcases your skills helps you okay. with your shop shop window that I've called it of, of yeah. LinkedIn for your job search um, post the right types of content um, so um, you know if you've got certain expertise in a professional field then you, you know you're going to want to um, showcase that especially on LinkedIn um, across the, all the social media channels you know um, being being um, proactive and engage in topic areas that might be relevant to um, your your current or your future em employers, um, yeah. and um, and their recommendation is um, the two cents methodology. So not everybody's going to want to create their own content like this, especially to um, you know get visibility for job search. But you can um, just follow the right types of companies and industries, um, okay. you know, thought leaders, and chip in. Like put in your two cents, and make comments, you know, underneath the yeah. uh, the blogs or the posts, and you can distinguish. Okay. Scared to that do way. that, yeah. Don't yeah, be scared to do that simply because it's a thought leader that's making the comments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, everybody appreciates engagement on their posts, so you're not taking away from you know the people who've created the original content, so you can reshare or or comment and you know get good visibility and just um you know as if it was networking in a room, you're making a positive impression, aren't you? Yeah, sure. Do you know of any um, uh, particular instances yourself where? social media interaction has either helped or hindered somebody get a particular uh, role? Do you know, I don't have a personal example because because what tends to happen is that if there is an issue that the um, you know prospect employer has noticed, um, they just mm -hmm. kind of back politely away from the candidates and they say then, you know, right. not quite not quite the right fit. Um, for us this time, you know, thanks for your interest sort of yeah. thing. And it gets shut down because no company wants to, uh, you know, get no, no. involved in potential legal issues of, you know, saying no to a candidate and here's why, um, because, you know, there might not be a proper legal basis for that. But it's just preference at the end of the day, isn't it? As to, you know, what kind of person that you view as a fit for the team or you don't. Um, I was I was thinking of the opposite situation, though. Um, there was like that Metropolitan um, Police Officer, Ben, um, somebody who was uh, recently suspended from duty, wasn't he? Because um, he was in a, in oh, the yeah, because of his neo-Nazi background. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean that that's the uh, that's the Metropolitan Police's um, uh, kind of hiring um and um back check systems so it wasn't working too well but just a quick look on facebook <laughs> would have actually yeah. um you know and he posted them. videos of himself had he doing um uh, spray painting i think on underpasses and things like that yeah exactly so um you know um that's the kind of things that companies should be really checking out but uh, you know as uh, as that employer has, has showed that you know they're not always they're not always doing that properly um you know in, I guess in all seriousness you looking for a, I guess if he's looking for a new job now he found you you could help him out on that front yeah <laughs> so in all seriousness um though yeah companies do um pay interest to, you know to to this kind of thing um and it's um especially um so the more senior or the more sensitive the position so um you know companies are all um you know concerned about what they call um reputational risk um and um 
that um you know it's part of esg like um environments um of environmental sustainability and governance so actually yeah. affects you know shareholder value like if you're the you know the communications director at oxfam or something like that to pick an example mm -hmm. and then you know there's um things you know dug up um you know in social media about your kind of um opinions on certain countries and things like that then that's gonna of course, yeah you know that, that's gonna put the person's position at risk it's gonna put the company in a um embarrassment situation kind of in terms of um pr and marketing and um you know it could affect the kind of the whole value of the company so yeah, it's a whole industry in itself to uh, you know to be doing this pre-vetting not not just um taking your references but kind of looking at a more holistic yeah, sure. kind of background check on on the individuals as well so not looking to scare anybody obviously you know carry on um you know with all your social media but just kind of um have that awareness that you know there is a, a ripple effect and everybody's got a digital footprint haven't they and it kind of, it, you of know, course. it stays there um, indelibly behind you. Yeah, it's fascinating. We're, we're starting to run out of time, Anthony, but if you could just give right. us a very brief summary of, of Product You and um, how to put yourself in the best position through your social channels to get the job you're after. Yeah, so um, um, I, c I could lean on a quote, actually. So um, John Wooden, um, the, the kind of famous back basketball coach guy, said, you know, be, pay more attention to your, um, to your character um, than your reputation, because your reputation is what people think you are, but your character, um, your character is, okay. is what you are. So, <laughs> I mean, um, getting a little bit deep, but you know, if you just, just kind of work, work on yourself and promote your kind of positive um, uh, opinions and uh, interactions and things like that, and then you'll have no problems realistically, will you? But um, in terms of tactics, um, um, have a good CV, good cover letter, of course. Um, but, you know, furthermore, have a, um, a congruent or, you know, a complementary um good link professional linkedin um profile um with a with a picture and with the recommendations and with the kind of work history aligned um and then um you know start to be proactive on linkedin and maybe facebook and things like that in relevant interest groups um because that can be um you know can be helpful to put you across in a good light but also to um you know get seen uh, and be more visible um sure. you know in the in the kind of network that you're probably moving in for job search so it's just an extra string to the bow your primary tool might be recruiters or um you know job boards in terms of getting the job but it might just come from your network as well and your network is increasingly online isn't it so um you know add those tools in your tool bag and uh, and good luck with the uh, with your you know your, your ongoing job search if uh, if you're gonna move um you know in the near future fantastic there's um there's plenty more about what we've spoken about today and all the other aspects involved in looking for a job in your book um and job search mm. job done tell tell us where we can get that yeah, so uh, I've normally got a copy uh, kind of nearby, haven't I? Job Search, Job Done, um, book that I wrote um, relatively recently. It takes you from start to finish um, in terms of job search, from, um, you know, thinking of your career and the bigger picture all the way through to um, preparing for an interview, negotiating a, um, an offer, resigning and uh, and kind of moving on. Um, it's on Amazon. Um, so in, in um, 12 countries, I think it is. Um, yeah. Last I looked, kind of UK-wise, 3 99 on the um the audio book and 7.99 on the paperback so yeah it's definitely a um a good investment um there's loads of upside in obviously getting the better job you know or the job more quickly or getting a better salary through the way that you've handled yourself in the job process so uh, yeah big upside for a small investment hopefully that's useful okay and people can find out lots more about max staff uh, at the website www.maxstaff.co.uk um yep. And we've also done two more of these lives previously, which uh, I will stick the links into the um, comments box at the, box at the bottom when we've signed off this. One is about preparing um, yourself for a job search, something that's, again, easily overlooked. And yeah. the second one was uh, top tips for a killer CV. So um, please look for the links um, for those videos if you've enjoyed today. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Anthony, as ever, thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Thanks, um, everybody, for tuning in uh, and hopefully see you next time. Yeah, um, we'll be back again soon for a fourth episode of our Max Staff Live. Please, as I always say, subscribe to the channel for the first uh, news about what we're doing and when we're doing it. And just finally, again, from me, Martin Croson, thanks a lot for your time today. Thanks for joining us. Anthony, thanks very much. And we'll see you all very soon. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.